Yeah, one thing I, you didn't mention, and I know you've done it, but you've updated the heritage commentary as well, haven't you? Which is, I know you did a good job on that. I know you had a lot of the groups to get the information, but uh, just uh, marks and times of 10 for that and 10 out of 10 for that. Thank you. Any further questions or comments? Chris? <laughs> To be fair, it's not actually related to the research here, but I was just if there's any more information on the uh, um, proposed disposal of the Arbus ferries. That's okay. So, the current arrangements, I think the reference is to Royal Daffodil, as she is. Uh, I can say to you openly that the organisation has signed a non disclosure agreement with a third party to explore opportunities around that disposal of that vessel. Uh, that's, that's the one that's not in use at the moment. The other two vessels are clearly in use, they're going to be in use for a number of years until we secure the new, the new vessels in service and there's been no discussions beyond once the new vessels are in service about what that will look like at this stage. It's anything else? Yeah. Okay. I'll just sort of sum up by thinking about thanking Gary for that presentation. I, I, said, I think this is really <laughs> exciting. You talk about family silver, you talk about crown jewels and the ferries are part of that for people in this region. And I think it's entirely right in the fact that not only are we going to be buying these ferries for the people in the region, uh, but actually we're making sure that they're fully included in exactly what we buy and exactly what we want. So some of the stuff that's come out of there so far is excellent stuff. Man, and I'm really, really looking forward to formally starting the procurement in the next few months. So thanks ever so much for that. We look forward to, to further updates. Okay. Um, just I've stayed up there really, Gary, because you're up next for item six, aren't you? Um, for the, the Mersey Tunnels updates for November in 2018. I'll keep talking just whilst you get yourself comfortable, because um, it's quite a straightforward paper. Uh, but now you sat down, I'll hand mm -hmm. over to you to present the copy. Thank you, Chair. Nothing like that, very different arrangements in place. Well, members will be aware that it's our <coughs> usual quarterly update report, this time on activities in the Mersey Tunnels. Um, for us, it's a, an update that complements already the corporate performance, so it doesn't touch on traffic numbers, it doesn't touch on our usual uh, performance related details, but looks more at key projects and our activities at Mersey Tunnels, just to make sure members are aware of how they're progressing. Uh, section 3.2 and 3.3 summarise the work that's ongoing around the in-lane card payments and our move towards contactless payments at Mersey Tunnels. I'm pleased to report, well, obviously the report's got some detail in it there. I can say on Tuesday of this week and earlier today, we were actually live in the staff planes over at Mersey Tunnels, at both tunnels. So on Tuesday it was at uh, Queensway uh, Tunnel, and this morning it was at Kingsway Wallasey Tunnel in the staff planes. And observing that personally this morning, it's been what I consider a major success because we're seeing the transaction times and the process is much more efficient both for the customer and for the staff. So that's pleasing to report on the back of that. Section 3.4 is just an initial heads up. Work hasn't started at this stage, but tenders are in for work <coughs> for the resurfacing of what we'd refer to as the M53 Gold Lake. So in, in, in simpler terms, uh, the Wallasey approach roads from Bidston Moss Viaduct through to the toll plaza itself on the Kingsway Wallasey Tunnel. Uh, that will be a significant piece of work uh, and one that we're very conscious could be disruptive for customers if it's not planned and delivered in an effective way. So we are in the process of evaluating <coughs> those tenders, looking at the options proposed as part of that before coming forward with a more detailed programme to make sure we minimise disruption for our customers. And section 3.5 summarises, again, some of the excellent work by Dill's team around the tunnel's traffic lane control system, putting ourselves in a position where we start to deploy, arrange that infrastructure into the tunnels itself, just to update and modernise the lane control systems, which includes the ability to improve messaging around variable message signs at the portals themselves. So that's, again, another exciting project that we'll see where it's commenced in the coming months. And finally, I thought it right to share with members based on the level of feedback from customers previously around the Liverpool to Chester bike ride, some further work we're doing as with that event organiser at Penine Events, along with a number of cycling stakeholders in the region with a meeting planned for the 20th of November. We'll look at last year's arrangements, we'll look at feedback 
before we put in place some final observations for the 2019 program. Happy to take any questions on those updates. Thanks, Gary. Any questions or comments? Gordon and then Natalie. Thank you, Chair. How are we getting on with uh, carbon reduction measures such as uh, variable speed fans to remove emissions and things? Are we, are we improving on that? We've got the photo of Balmatic, but is there any other plans to, uh, to improve that area? Yeah, hi, Dear Masters um, Head of Asset Management. We are in the process of renewing the jet fans and overhauling them and rewinding. Um, <coughs> Reviewing the rewinding elements as well. It's a process that's ongoing as well. Um, the carbon reduction measures we're continuously monitoring the, the emissions through the tunnels anyway. And if there's more information required, um, we can share that at the next update report if required. If that helps. Thanks, Dr. Thank you, Chair. Just want to um, commend the progress that's being made in relation to the in lane card payment is obviously uh, that was a bit of a setback uh, and the whole point of um, getting people through the tunnel fast and making um, in terms of the card payment quite efficient and with the fast start um, and obviously um, Gary and myself and um, Marge has had that discussion in terms of how can we look at making sure with all the developments on online payment how can we you know get getting the trend really where other areas have. So again, obviously that's a big challenge, but we look forward and obviously Gary will see how he can work his magic for us to achieve that. Very much so. I mean, I think we're interested by the car payments because our, our evidence and our research shows us potentially we've got the opportunity to transfer 65 percent of the current cash payments over to, to car payments but i think the success we're already there in lots of ways with fast tag fast tags at the highest rate we've ever seen it now it's 60 percent of all payments through tunnels are made by fast tag i can say to you 97 percent of that payments for fast tags come through to our website so it really is a lot of it is built around the online and it's only something we're looking to promote more and more moving but just wanted to come to mind, is that saving us any money, Gary, if we're not having as much cash? We'd expect the, the, the money to be saved longer term. So the simplest answer is there'll be cash transaction charges, but there'll also be card transaction charges too. Um, so it, the, the, often they'll net each other off. What we, what we need to look at is potentially longer term, the significant costs associated with putting cash infrastructure in place, including cash officers and cash collection arrangements. And ultimately, cash can be quite weird. Those need to be walked to be replaced as every maintenance program associated with them. So for us, longer term, we expect that we will make savings association with the reduction in cash, yes. Okay, any further questions or comments? If not, if I can um, just sort of move the recommendation in paragraph two of the report and thank Gary for that report and look forward to further updates. Okay, item seven is the Mystery Shopping Programme update for 2018 and Michelle's presenting this. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'll just take a Um, which has highlighted particular issues such as graffiti at certain 
and stops. So section 3.5 uh, describes the nature of the Ministry of Shopping Research. Um, it's contracted to an external agency um, to manage the shoppers and um, to supply the information <coughs> from a customer perspective. They would receive 100 um, individual reports per wave. And these are based on information requested from the different service areas. And each report is reports on each segment of the journey. So there would be a report on journey planning, a report on buying purchasing tickets at a bus or a rail station, and then a report on the bus <coughs> or a rail journey. And service areas have utilised the notice produced by the visits in a number of ways. Um, for example, it feeds into monitoring performance of the bus alliance activities, uh, such as investments for new vehicles and testing the launch of the new customer services number last year. Rail used the findings for complaints for the bus, uh, sorry, for the rail stations and journeys, and the um, journey planning reports utilising the most travel <coughs> website and the app will be used as part of a, a wider review the most travel website going forward. The summary report appended um, to this just gives a flavour of some of the comments that have been received um, because it's quite rich in detail what we get back. Um, but some of the key areas tested this year include testing bus routes um, that go to the airport either via the express 500 service or the indirect 89 service from St Helens and um, there's been um, feedback on rounding up those services and um, luggage space on and peak summer time services. Also looks at staff presence at bus stations outside of the core opening hours of um, bus stations. Um, so for example from the six visits only two shoppers found a member of staff um, to ask any questions from and the last wave looked at the experience of um, interchanging between bus and rail and bus to bus, um, such as between Queen Square and Liverpool Lime Streets, as well as quite a, a light on uh, 